Beautiful crown. And in college basketball, Texas Western stunned the nation, defeating Kentucky for the national title. 20 years later, the 1966 Minor Magic remains the crowning achievement in El Paso sports history. Good evening, I'm Kevin Lovell. This is the story of the team that put El Paso on the map and changed the course of college basketball. This is Texas Western Takes It All. But the coach remains the same. Don Haskins has five WAC championships, almost 500 career victories, but that 66 team is the one that stands out. But what they, you know, they almost drove me nuts because they could play so well when they wanted to, and their complacency drove me, you know, just totally up a wall, almost had a nervous breakdown. Um, you know, you kind of notice I've had teams, uh, we go out to the airport and we'll have two guys over here and two guys over here and three over here and one over here and what have you. And these guys, uh, the whole bunch of them, they're always, always together. Playing their games in Memorial Gymnasium, the Miners were unbeatable at home. The highlight coming against number four, Iowa, where the Miners defeated them soundly. On the road, UTEP was almost as invincible. At New Mexico, Texas Western came from 20 down in the second half to win. The only defeat at Seattle in the final game. But that only helped to prepare the Miners for the playoffs. One, two, three. After an easy opening round win over Oklahoma City, the Miners faced talented Cincinnati at the Midwest Regional in Lubbock. Texas Western trailed by nine points when David Latin ignited the comeback. The game went into overtime, tied at 69. That's when Willie Cager drives to the hoop for two. The Miners with a two-point lead, they will not relinquish. The Bearcats' desperation try at the buzzer is off the mark. Texas Western survives the scare. It's a 78-76 win over Cincinnati. A classic matchup with Kansas proved to be an even tougher win. The game featured the battle between two of the nation's premier guards. Bobby Joe Hill with a bit of thievery for TWC. But late in the contest, the Jayhawks make up a big deficit. Joe Joe White, the future NBA great with a steal of his own. The game goes into overtime. Late in the extra session, the score is tied at 71 when Joe Joe gets set to cut loose what would be the winning basket. But watch the trailing official closely. White is ruled to have stepped out of bounds. The shot is no good. Texas Western lives on. Neville Shedd with the rebound basket in the second OT. The Miners escape Lubbock with an 81-80 victory over Kansas. Texas Western moves on to Annapolis, Maryland in the final four. The Miners semifinal opponent, WAC champion Utah. Young coach Don Haskins and team are ready to go to war. Unfortunately, so is Jerry Chambers of the running Utes. No Miner could stop big number 40. He was to score 38 points in the game. The Bear looked down his bench and sent defensive ace Jerry Armstrong into it. Armstrong might have been the difference. Whenever a pass went inside to Chambers, Armstrong seemed to get his hands on the basketball, tipping it away to his teammates. And the Miners were scoring. Texas Western slam dunked its way to an 85-78 semifinal victory over Utah. Jerry Armstrong, so instrumental in the Miner win, would not take off his warm-up for the championship game. But there was no dissension by the man who's now a high school coach. I figured coach knew the best. I was brought up that way, and, and uh, I try to steal that in my players today. Just like members of the team were four pretty sophomore girls from Texas Western who made the trip to the Final Four. One of those cheerleaders is Pam Pippen, now a history teacher at El Paso's Isleta High School. We, at the time, we didn't realize exactly what we were getting into, but it wasn't until we got up there that we uh, got wrapped up into all the excitement that they had. And then when it narrowed us down to the last two, uh, we knew something was up. What was up for Texas Western? A national championship confrontation with top-ranked Kentucky. Well, experts said the Kentucky-Duke game was for the national championship. The Miners in Utah contest was supposedly for third place. But the Miners were confident of beating Kentucky. You know, our minds were made up that we were going to win the game. Kentucky's starting lineup featured two All-Americans, Pat Riley and Louis Dampier. The Miners countered with a collection of unheralded players from the big city. Bobby Joe Hill, Orson Artis, David Latin, and Harry Flournoy all were regulars. However, opting for quickness, Don Askins jockeyed his lineup, inserting little 5'6 sophomore Willie Worsley. Two decades later, Worsley's reaction to starting is the same as on game day. Shock, amazed, and surprised. Because actually, in reality, when he said Willie start, I thought he was talking to Willie Cager because he already named Owen Bobby to play. And I was really honored, but I was ready to play, though. A story perhaps more fiction than fact passed down through the years in El Paso is that Coach Haskins ordered David Latin charge or no charge to dunk the ball the first time he touched it. Kentucky was playing a zone defense, and uh, we, were in our, uh, we were in our 
our uh, sort of roving offense where we just pass the ball around and, and look for the look for a player that's open and try to try to get it inside, especially early especially early during the game. And uh, Bobby spotted me down near the basket, and uh, I was able to get a wonderful slam dunk at the beginning. This slam was more of the Goliath nature. Latin and the Miners proved they would not be intimidated. Kentucky did fight back to take a two-point lead on the jumper by Riley. The teams traded baskets. The Miners were only a point out midway through the first half when a 5'10 guard for the orange and white made history. Bobby Joe Hill came over to steal the ball from Tommy Crum. With the layup, Texas Western had a lead of 12 to 9. When the Wildcats came back down the floor, Hill makes it two consecutive thefts, this one from Louis Dampier. Bobby Joe scored again. He's just in the right place at the right time, so I just went for it. Those steals are no big deal with Bobby Joe, but did they change his life? Nah, they, I guess everybody else made more out of it. I still like Latin dunks. He <laughs> dunked a few people in the basket to me. Hill's heroics grabbed national attention. Bobby Joe certainly didn't let it get to his head. Basketball was not an all-consuming passion. Bobby Joe could have been in the NBA had he chosen to uh, do that. He, um, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't his bag, but uh, one of the most intense competitors that I have ever seen. Whenever, whenever it come time to, as he used to say, do business. Bobby Joe never completed his eligibility. He dropped off the team the next year and went to work where he's still employed at El Paso Natural Gas. His attitude about basketball will never change. It was a good time you had, but it wasn't, I mean, it's not a life and death matter basketball, was it, or is it? Well, it was, it was just business. I mean, I think about it, it was one of my highlights of life, but, you know, playing ball, but... Well, like I say, it's the ultimate. You gotta win it, but. But if you'd have lost, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. I take nah, it. Nah, you'd wake up the next day. The sun been shining, especially if you're not Paso. <laughs> Bobby Joe and the Miners continued their first half dominance in Kentucky. Latin with another slam and intermission. Texas Western had a lead of 34-31. As the Miners left the floor, one of the reserves would not be seen again. To this day, Togo Rayley has never seen the second half. Dr. Joe Glaston was with me, and we were on the end of the bench together, and I got up to get a drink of water, and I guess the excitement and everything like that, and I just, I went down. We went back to the locker room, and I stayed in the locker room the second half. What'd you do? Did you listen on a radio? No, I was out cold. He gave me a shot. They thought I had a mild heart attack, and, and they were just real concerned about it, so I stayed in the locker room the second half. And it's coming in and out of the, the, the little dream I was in, you know, I could hear the announcers saying, you know, Texas Western College, you knew NCAA champ. It wasn't easy for the Miners. Three times the Wildcats climbed to within a single point. Louis Dampier with a long jumper. However, Orston Artis answers with a clutch outside shot of his own. TWC's defense forced Kentucky into bad shots. The Miners controlled the boards. Even little Willie Worsley mixed it up inside. Once fouled, the Miners make the free throws. This one by Worsley is a classic. The ball circles the rim five times before falling in. Texas Western stretched the margin to 11. It was Bobby Joe taking center stage. Another steal leads to a pull-up jumper by the KG point guard. The Wildcats bench knew it was all over. Kentucky had fought the law, and Texas Western had won, 72-65. On campus, a giant bonfire occurred at the intersection of Hawthorne and College Streets. El Paso was so proud. You know, it was like your best friend winning the, the race for U.S. president or something. It just, people just went crazy. Just crazy. That's and it, 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 it just, the whole city got the feeling. And, and, you know, you'd walk down the street, you know, two weeks later, and, and you know, everybody had a smile on their face. The victory set off a celebration in El Paso such as the city had never seen. After a welcoming party at the airport, the team made its way down Montana Street. The parade is said to have drawn more than 100,000 people. The Miners received immense national attention. Even to this day, they still talk about the only NCAA crowned by Texas University. Sports Illustrated put the Texas Western win on its cover. Entitled, Texas Western Takes It All, the March 24, 1966 issue featured Harry Flournoy stealing a rebound from Pat Riley. Well, I have it up in a place of, of prominence in my house, and when I have people come by, they always look at it. Pictures of Bobby Joe Hill dominated the inside story. The refreshing article was by Frank DePort, but two years later, Sports Illustrated would zap El Paso with a damaging piece alleging exploitation of Texas Western's black basketball players. 